Good morning. How the devil are you doing this fine day? Me, I'm feeling remarkably chipper as it happens. Uh, maybe it's because of all the positive news I'm about to bring you. Maybe it's because I'm three cups of coffee into the day. And maybe it's purely because it's a Friday. But either way, thanks for asking. Uh, we've got another show filled with creamy demolition and construction goodness, all topped with industry sprinkles. So without further ado, let's hit that intro and get this show on the road. Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. It's Friday, the 3rd of September, and as that ever-present guy just said, welcome to The Breakfast Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. In today's show, Terex Trucks have rebranded as Rockback. JCB is seeking 100 welders to satisfy demand for its equipment. Sailwood has been snapped up. MGL Demolition marks its 50th anniversary with a new Komatsu excavator. In addition to all that, uh, we are opening up our airwaves today. Uh, If you'd like to be part of today's show, or if you have either a computer with a webcam and microphone or a smartphone or tablet, then please hit the link in the chat and we'll bring you on at the end of the show. Uh, You're free to talk about today's news, industry news, industry issues, share details of new products or services. We could even have a chat about the ABBA reunion. Trust me, I'm very excited about that. Uh, In fact, you can talk about pretty much anything. All I would ask is that you bear in mind that this is on a one strike and you're out basis. So please keep it clean and sensible, people. Uh, If you've got any comments, questions or anything else, uh, please leave them in the chat and I'll get to them at the end of the show. But before then, let's see who among the rich and the shameless will be celebrating their birthdays on this day of days. It's many happy returns to American architect Louis Sullivan, a man known as the father of skyscrapers. Uh, Also happy birthday to Shirley Valentine actress Pauline Collins, to Sex Pistols guitarist and general hellraiser Steve Jones, and happy birthday also to actor Charlie Sheen, who has also raised a little hell in his time. Uh, Many happy returns to them one and all. And by the way, uh, good luck to Collard Group MD, uh, Rob Collard, who is in Germany today uh, competing at the Nürburgring in the penultimate round of the GT World Challenge Europe Championship. Uh, You can actually watch Rob in his shocking pink car live on the GT World YouTube channel from 1.45 on Sunday. Oh, if you only knew the agony of keeping this one a secret. Uh, If you were watching our live show last night, you will know that we brought you the news that Terex Trucks has been rebranded as Rockback. Uh, You'll also know that myself and my construction collective colleagues, uh, Nick Drew and Peter Haddock, actually featured in the video with which this rebranding was announced. Uh, We've actually been aware of this important change for well over a month now, and it's been absolute hell keeping it a secret. It kind of goes against everything I stand for as a journalist. Uh, But now the cat is out the bag. Allow me to tell you just a little bit more. Rockback is the new name for Terex Trucks, with the new brand maintaining a proud hauling heritage with a future-focused vision. And that's what the new trucks look like. As part of the new brand launch, the new machines now come in Rockback colours and livery, as you can see. Uh, While maintaining the experience design, craft and precision that are synonymous with the company's haulers, the new RA30 and RA40 deliver better fuel economy, lower emissions, improved safety and greater durability. With a tough design that's built to last, the haulers power through hard work with ease, boosting customers' productivity no matter how tough the conditions. Throughout the last four decades, the company has never wavered in its promise to customers to deliver powerful, reliable, articulated haulers, and that legacy remains front and centre with the new Rockback brand. At the same time, uh, the new name represents an exciting new future, 
and reflects the significant advances the organization has made in recent years, as well as its new strategic priorities. Uh, Paul Douglas, the managing director, said, our company has an incredible history and a proud heritage. Seven years ago, we became a member of the Volvo Group, which allowed us to make major improvements in every part of our business. Millions of pounds have been invested in improving our products, modernizing our facilities, expanding our network, and developing our people. It's been a process of continual evolution. That's why we feel it's right to recognize this evolution with a new brand name to launch an exciting new chapter in our history. Uh, And we'll keep investing to further improve our machines for our customers. Now, I mentioned a launch video. Uh, The full-length video runs to about 48 minutes, so it's way too long to include in our show uh, this morning. But you can see it. I uploaded it in the last 10, 15 minutes or so over on demolitionnews.com. It's the lead story over there. You can certainly go and have a look. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the new name in the world of ADTs. As I said, the full-length launch video is over on demolitionnews.com right now, uh, and I, I would urge you to go and take a look, uh, but ideally not until today's show is over. The Miller GT Series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting-edge intelligent coupler technology, increasing job site safety, machine versatility, and productivity. It's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford. To find out more, visit millergroundbreaking.com. Sticking with our theme of British manufacturers, JCB is apparently recruiting 100 new welders for its Staffordshire factories as demand for its products continues to soar. The recruitment drive has just got underway for the permanent jobs at JCB's world headquarters and its plants in Cheadle and Utopsita. In September, JCB will also welcome an additional 15 new recruits on its fabrication and welding apprenticeship. Uh, In the past three years, almost 70 welding apprentices have passed through their courses and all gained permanent JCB jobs. The news comes as demand for JCB machines reaches historic heights, with most products now sold out until next year. It also comes in a year when JCB has recruited 1,350 new shop floor employees and handed permanent JCB contracts to 1,000 agency employees as well. Uh, JCB Chief uh, Chief Operating Officer, sorry, Mark Turner said, JCB has been working very hard over over the past few years to attract new entrants to this highly skilled job with its apprenticeship and training programs. We are delighted to be building on that success with the creation of 100 permanent new welders jobs. Uh, We offer some of the best conditions and pay rates in the region with opportunities for night shift work and overtime. This is great news for welders in the area looking to join a successful global company. Uh, As I said, um, JCB has just announced that most of its products are now sold out until next year. So that's surely another sign of the positivity that continues to permeate through the industry. And it's terrific terrific to see both JCB and Rockback investing in the future. (music) Morris Leslie, plant hire has announced the acquisition of Selwood Limited's plant hire business. 
The sale successfully completed on Wednesday, the 1st of September, what, two days ago, and sees uh, Morris Leslie acquire a further five depots, bringing their UK locations up to 17, stretching from the highlands of Scotland to southwest England. The new locations are in Birmingham, Bournemouth, Bristol, Exeter and Southampton, and they further complement Morris Leslie's plant hire, that uh, they're already competitive, uh, comprehensive and nationwide coverage. Um, as you can see, if I press the right button, um, these new locations have already been incorporated on the Morris Leslie website. Um, so you can go and take a look at that um, at once the show is over. Uh, the company also reports that all Selwood staff will be transferring across as part of the acquisition. Uh, so massive congratulations to the team at Morris Leslie on this important and very, very timely uh, investment. Now, We've just done who's investing. Let's have a look at who's. Feels like Marabini Komatsu are on a bit of a roll at the moment. Uh, Yesterday, we brought you news uh, of a 10 excavator sale to the good folks at Blackwood Plant Hire. And today, we bring you news of the delivery of a very smart looking new unit to the team at MGL Demolition up in the Northeast. Uh, MGL is currently celebrating its 50th anniversary and it's marked that milestone by taking delivery of a new PC490 excavator in full MGL delivery. Uh, congratulations to the team at MGL uh, and happy anniversary. And hats off also to Marabini Komatsu on yet another sale into the UK demolition industry. Um, what button do we need next? We need one of those. <laughs> Glen Aaron Nursing Home has set aside five million of your finest English quids for the construction of a new care home in Horsham, not a million miles from where I'm sat right now. Uh, Westridge Construction is thought to be in the running for the construction of the new two-story building. But first, a single story structure a single story structure on the site will need to be removed by a suitably qualified demolition contractor. And at the time of broadcast, a demolition contractor has yet to be appointed. You can find out more about this project lead and countless more just like it over at buildersconference.co.uk. Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or better still, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right, back to Beardy. Well, that pretty much wraps up this morning's show. Um, judging by the green room, I've had no takers on my opening of the airwaves. <clears throat> I, I have had one comment, uh, which I will share with you. Um, it's from our friend Louise Carney, uh, who says she can't come on the show because she's in her pyjamas. Lou, if you knew how I was dressed below the waist right now, Frankly, you'd probably tune out, actually. Uh, As I say, that pretty much wraps up today's show. I'll roll the outro in just a second before jumping over into the chat proper to see what's on the menu today. Uh, I'll then head off to pull together this week's episode of The Weekend Wrap, which will drop at some ungodly hour uh, tomorrow morning. I'll also be back here on Monday, same time, same place, for more of this old stuff and nonsense. But until then, have a great day. More importantly, have a great weekend. Stay safe, look after yourself, your family, your friends and your colleagues. And thank you as ever for watching. Right, let's see what's going on in the chat. Good morning, Ken. Uh, Good to see you here as always. Nick Drew is on his travels, I think, today. Uh, Good morning, Nick. Good to see you here. Um, Yeah, look, I I don't want to get distracted by things that aren't of the industry, but um, as as a kid, I was a huge ABBA fan, and and I, I... Despite the fact that I tend to like my music very loud and very shouty with lots of guitars and screaming, still a bit of an ABBA fan today, uh, and I have to say, the new song um, that they've released to announce that um that reunion is really something else ah now andy hair good morning to you sir oh there we go unmute that that might work You're all right, how are you doing today andy yeah not so bad just got the back 
end of that as a phone call came in. Fantastic stuff. Um, how are things up in the world of Northern Track? Well, we're doing a bit. We're getting some stuff out. As you can see, I've got I've got the latest, well, wrong side, that side, the pictures at Ferry Bridge. <laughs> of course, yeah, because you you guys are very actively involved in uh, things with the, the good folks at Kelbray, aren't you? Yeah, we've got a few bits going into them now, sorting out. Now they've done the latest blowdown up there, um, keeping them out of mischief, doing a bit of concrete crushing now with the big pulverizers that we put into them. Oh, fantastic stuff. Now, I, I, know, I know you and I last spoke formally um when the, the, we were in the middle of a lockdown and and i, I know you were um desperately trying to, to get government funding and that kind of thing but i mean you you've obviously i mean the very fact that you're talking to me now you obviously made it through the darkest days how are things working out now well we're, we're still here as ever but i mean that's 30 odd years in the game so we've got to give it a try haven't we but yeah we we sort of carried on bits coming through and obviously picked up a few customers on the way that we've not seen and it's just kind of kept us ticking over. Um, things are what they are at the minute. We, we tend to find, like everybody, the main problem at the minute is not so much getting the jobs, it's getting the actual material to do the jobs, being able to afford to pay for that material and getting components. Components are a big problem for us at the minute in transport as everybody. Yeah, I, I, in front enough, I mean, you've just beaten me to the punch there. I, I'm just racking my brains. Obviously, I mean, steel is in, is in pretty short supply, but HGV drivers, which obviously you yeah. guys very much rely upon. I, do you, I mean, do you employ drivers or is this, you know, you, we, you literally... No, I mean, we, we don't directly employ drivers, so we're using transport. So we're using guys, we're using hauliers, groupage services, whichever. The problem I'm finding is actually physically managing to get... Um, transport a range because there's just a shortage of wagons, shortage of trailers. We have a lot of problem at the minute getting things out of Europe. And obviously since Brexit, it's a case of getting equipment organised to get into the country. Is the uh, the paperwork side of things. It's nothing that's impossible to do, but it just seems to be taking longer. And there's an awful lot more of the paperwork that just ties things up and everything's got to be sort of every, every I dotted, every T crossed so that Things can actually make it into the country. That seems to be the problem for us at the minute. But you, I, I mean, if memory serves me correctly, I mean, you're, you're also an exporter of, of attachments as well, aren't you? Yes. How, yeah, are, yeah. how I mean, are things we, we panning export. out? In I was going to say, how are things panning out in terms of, of Brexit and all that good stuff? Um, to, to be honest, much much of our export was already done sort of outside of the EU. So. The, the paperwork side and things for that and getting things out and getting things onto boats and sent out is not really an issue. So at the minute, export is kind of easier than import, daft as it is. It's, it's the struggle getting things literally across the channel rather than getting things beyond that. I can get things sent out. We've got um, a bit going out this week. We're going out, a usual customer sending bits out to Israel. And it's just not a problem. That just disappears and goes. But... At the minute, it just seems to be local transport because it's more of a problem. Yeah, absolutely, and and, it, and unfortunately, I mean, it, it seems to be across the board. I mean, I've I've literally heard of um, UK. I mean, one demolition company up in the northeast, in particular, that's that's basically offering a bounty to get HGV drivers, you know, introduce an HGV driver and get five hundred pound or something like that. Absolutely crazy yeah. situation. Yeah, yeah. It's certainly an a lot interesting of I mean, point. There's, there's obviously a lot of competition for drivers and bits at the minute, so. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of strange because as you look around on the message boards, as far as sort of transport's concerned and the drivers are concerned, you get the feeling that actually it's it's kind of better for the drivers in this country because it would appear that they're actually being recognised for the work they do, and their rates and wages are, are being driven up somewhat to a reasonable rate, so they're actually getting decent wages for what they do. But I think the the whole shortage uh, it's a case of where we go with that. I mean, obviously the shortage is caused by the problems in Europe, Brexit, all the rest of it. But a lot of it is more pandemic related, actually getting people through tests and getting drivers through tests. But we've, we've got to get on top of it. It's causing so many bottlenecks, it really is. Um, and we're hearing that a lot, you know, all over the place, be it from materials, components, right right back down to parcel carriers and things. We have, we have all sorts of problems with just basic parcel carriers. Um, so there's definitely transport issues. Yeah, I, and it's a crazy situation, you know. I, we, we we find ourselves in the construction and demolition industry at a, a point where you know business is booming. It would be such a shame if we couldn't take full advantage of that boom just because we haven't got enough drivers, skilled workers, or, or materials. Absolutely crazy situation. 
Yeah, yeah, it's 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 difficult, but we it's it's kind of a knock on effect as well because the problem that we've got obviously we're buying components for equipment that are coming in. We have components coming in from Europe, and it's the inability to actually get an idea of when you can get hold of these parts. We've got we've got parts coming into us at the minute, which are from a supplier which we had to order way back in April to make sure we got supply for September. Normally, these pieces would be on um, probably about a four or five week delivery, regular term, you know, 10, 15 pieces, hydraulic motors, not a problem. At the moment, the supplier sending me in the latest order that we've got comes in on Monday and they've just turned around to me and said, oh, by the way, um, the availability on these, the actual delivery time will now be 24 weeks. So this is like six months. We've got to, you know, we've got to plan and try and work out where we're going to be in six months' time to cover what orders we might have. And it's like this whole crystal ball idea. We've just got so much where we've got to gaze into the future and guess just to get over the problems that we've got in supply and availability. On top of the basic problems of material, material prices are just ridiculous. You know, material prices for some of the steels that we're buying, we've seen increases over 100% if you can actually get hold of bits and pieces, certainly some engineered products are just really difficult to get hold of and just in short supply generally. I've just reported, I mean, I, I know you're on a, a slightly different scale to uh, the, the folks up at JCB, but I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're reporting the fact that they are, you know, a lot of their products are sold out until next year. Yeah. Which, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, on, the, on, on the face of it, is, is fantastic news, but... What if you what if you need one of the excavators or a backhoe loader or something in between times? How it's, are you finding that? How far out are you? We we sort of we we're seeing different things. I mean, at the moment we've got supply of some parts. We we always have to keep on top of where we need to be with some of the components. So we've got orders, but we are having to make sure that we're kind of forward ordering with the crystal ball in mind that we don't really know where we're going, but we've got to invest money that probably I'd rather not be investing at this minute in time just to put more components on the floor to try and cover potential orders as well as stock and orders that are coming through. Now, I talked um, yesterday, I was talking to one of my tube suppliers and those guys actually supplied to JCP. And the tube supplier I spoke to said, well, as far as last month was concerned, they had their best month in material sales for 31 years. And much of that was down to JCP because their demand is so great. I and mean, I think at the minute they're looking to sort of sit on 70 apprentice welders brilliant news for people getting into jobs down there and actually getting a career and moving people into this industry, which is difficult for the best of times. But it's kind of, it, it's so much crystal ball for us and a lot of people at the minute when you might not have sort of free funds that you can just aim at things and just put a pile of stock of materials, components and everything on the floor. It's, it's kind of difficult. You need to, it's, it's a fine balancing act to actually balance what you've got on the floor as opposed to what's coming in. And it's just, it's taking more cash reserves that are not always there, which is the main problem. One of the things I wanted to ask you about, and I, I, I'm, I'm planning to cover this next week, um, but I've, I've heard, um, and I've, I've had a very quick look at it, um, that the folks over at Steel Wrist are now doing um, basically an online um, custom bucket builder. Now, bear in mind, you, I mean, you are in the, the, the custom attachment business. That's an interesting take on things, isn't it? You know, to be able to go on and say, well, you know, I've got this size machine, these these size pins, I want it to do this, that, and the other. Yeah. It's a, it's an yeah. interesting take on 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 the future of attachments, isn't it? I think I think attachments in general, the future has to be that. I mean, you can if if you're looking for a bucket, you can go and buy them from 101 different places. You can go on eBay and find something cheap, cheerful, something that somebody's bought a container load of from India or wherever. But the problem is, I think people now certainly after the recent times, are actually waking up to the idea that, that price is not always where we need to be concentrating. We've always kind of tried to pioneer that, and it's difficult at times because you're competing against both ends of the market. We compete against the guys that may be seen as sort of top of the market, and we compete against people who come on to me and say, well, I can get one of those on eBay for 50 quid. And it's kind of like, yeah, but you are getting what you pay for. And the idea that you can actually get more people to understand the process of actually bespoke building an attachment and being able to specify things and actually spend the money where you need to spend the money. So you can give them the option. Certainly with buckets, you can say, right, well, the, the sides and the edge, you can have those out of hard ox if you want. Do you want the back out of hard ox as well? It'll put X amount of money on the price, but it may also put an extra 12 months of life in your bucket. And it's, it's more interesting the bespoke market. And I certainly, you know, we're, we're not a big outfit. 
by any means. You know, a few lads in the workshop do it. We, we like to get into bespoke products and it's nice to get somebody who understands that they can actually spend their money wisely. And it's nice to see more people getting involved in that idea and actually want to spend money wisely. Certainly, the, you know, the pulverizer we do some with Kelp Ray, we sat down with them, with all the guys that were involved, we specified it, we changed the design. It's, you know, we class them as pulverizers, but they're not. They're more of a steelworks tool. And the whole idea is different, but they were prepared to sit down with us and discuss what they had, what they wanted, what they wanted to achieve. And, and we could actually price something accordingly. And it's, it's always nice to be able to do that for a customer because you know that they're prepared to spend the money and that money will be spent properly. You know, they, they're actually buying something that is worthwhile. They're extending the life of the tool. They're extending the life of the machine that's going to be using the tool. And that money is a good investment, but it's, it's always been sort of a bit of a banging ahead against the wall to get people to actually get on board with that. So the more people that can offer a bespoke piece of equipment, the better, definitely. Yeah, I, I mean, that's a, a point that Peter's backing up there, um, saying about, yeah, I see that. you know, yeah, I mean, I think that echoes everything you just said. It, it never ceases to amaze me, the, the fact that you, you've got people spending, you know, a quarter of a million possibly on an excavator and then trying to scrimp on the attachment that actually does the work. Seems crazy to me. <laughs> That is the bane of my life, especially as far as sort of the demolition industry is concerned. Is people will you people will go buy that brilliant new shiny EX seven hundred. They'll fit it out with a Kukurek telescopic arm. They'll, they'll do so much and spend an absolute fortune, and then they'll scratch around in some auction and buy some knackered old rotary pulverizer and stick it on the end of that machine. And it's like, no. I mean, I, I saw. I saw a comment, I think, from our, our, our own favourite, Mr. Wilkinson, Austin Wilkinson, and he actually has got the right idea of it. And I saw that in print recently where I said, yeah, we, we can buy machines. Machines are readily available, good quality machines, fairly young machines that have got plenty of life in them. And he would rather spend the money on the attachment. And that's brilliant. I mean, it's brilliant for us because we can sell him attachments, but it's brilliant for him in that he appreciates and can actually understand the bit of machinery on the end of the machine is doing the work. The rest of it is just a carrier. You can spend as much as you like on that carrier. You can make the guy who sat in the cab as comfy as possible with his air con and his Bluetooth and his radio. Fantastic. He gets a nice working environment. But if he's not got a productive tool on the end of that machine, you may as well just take your money and throw it in the street. It's not going to work. You've, you've got to appreciate the attachment on the end. More more demolition contractors obviously do appreciate that these days and certainly more and more with you know advancements like oil quick and things like that and the steel wrist where they're actually appreciating the the ability to swap to get the correct attachment on the machine but it's certainly difficult sometimes to persuade people that spending the money on the attachment is better than spending the extra on the machine all the time i come up against that Absolutely. Andy, look, as, as you've been good enough to grace us with your presence today, remind people of what Northern Track is all about and where they can find you. I mean, you can find us on the website, northerntrack.com. You can find me lurking around on Twitter and LinkedIn. I think these days, if you stick Northern Track into any search engine, you're going to find something relating to us or me. But at the end of the day, we're more interested in selling demolition attachments to people. Again, people who are looking for something that's actually wants to do a job, wants to perform and wants to talk to a company that can and is able to sort of bespoke build to suit an application if needs be. We've got plenty of products available that we can send out there. We've got links with uh, Hydram in the Netherlands so we can cover the whole gamut of equipment realistically. But our own production, as always, we specialised in mechanical attachments and the selected routes. But bomb on the website, see what's there. If you don't see something that's there, drop me an email. You never know. I've been around long enough and I've seen most of the things. So one way or another, we can probably help you. Or if I can't help you directly, I'm sure to get away and you'll tell me you can. Fantastic. Andy, you're an absolute star. Thanks ever so much for joining us today. Have a great day. Keep Cheers. up the good work and keep that purple power coming. Cheers. Thanks, Mark. All the best.